A savvy Wang Hong is said to be able to earn up to forty-six million dollars a year, and the Wang Hong economy in China has surged in recent years. It is now worth tens of billions of dollars. These are some of the headlines you might find online if you've been paying attention to what's going on in China. Yet outside of China, the term Wang Hong is relatively unknown. So, what is a Wang Hong? The term Wang Hong is a short form of Wang Luo Hong Ren. Wang Luo means network in the sense of social media network, and Hong Ren literally means red people. Now, this brute translation, of course, cannot capture the nuances of the culture. In Chinese culture, the color red is much more than just a color. And for more on that, you may want to watch my previous video about the prominence of red in Chinese culture. As a shorter explanation, among many things, red is used to represent success, joy, and happy events in general. When red is paired with people, ren, it becomes a set phrase, hong ren, or red people. The usage of this can be traced back to the late Qing Dynasty in a novel by Li Boyuan. It was used to refer to someone who is favored by a boss or a lucky person. Wang Hong, literally translated as "web red," this was initially a Chinese term only used for internet celebrities. Well, actually, the idea of Wang Hong isn't exactly the same as the internet celebrities or the influencers of United States-based social media platforms. We will go into that in a while, but both Wang Hong and these internet celebrities and influencers do share many similarities, and that we can put them into the category of social media entertainment. So, with that, we can say that the Wang Hong economy is the Chinese version of the social media entertainment economy. This is especially accurate because the term Wang Hong is widely used in China when referring to something popular in general or something that has gone viral, such as Wang Hong Wan Ji, popular toys, Wang Hong Shi Pin, a video that's gone viral, and you may also see it being used as an attribute for places. For example, Wang Hong Da Ka Di, or Instagrammable spots in English. The term "da ka" literally means punched card. It's a metaphor to refer to a place or spot that you have to check out. Taking a photo here is proof that you have checked into the trend. So it's clear that Wang Hong is a polysemous term, and in many contexts, the term Wang Hong also suggests a certain kind of fake nature, such as when a place or venue is famous for looking good. Only in pictures. Today, the Wang Hong phenomenon is an inseparable part of Chinese culture. What makes it so remarkable, though, is the speed at which it evolved from a term that was still interchangeable with another term for famous people online, Wang Luo Mingren, in the mid 2010s, to its current status as a unique term that carries with it a vast cultural and economic ecosystem. To explain the phrase "Wang Luo Mingren," literally "famous people on the internet," is a comprehensive term used to denote online contributors ranging from opinion shapers, writers, activists, intellectuals, and even those in memes. It is a term that has a sense of the elite few, as opposed to the longer form of "Wang Hong," "Wang Luo Hong Ren." The phrase for "quote unquote" commoners that have gone viral or become popular on Chinese social media. Prior to 2015, these two phrases were still interchangeable. The distinction started to take shape in 2015 after the emergence of the Wang Hong economy out of a seminar sponsored by Taobao, an online shopping platform owned by the Alibaba Group. One year after this seminar, we saw the breakout success of Papi Jiang, a comedian, and Jiang Daiyi, a fashion designer. Both work their magic on Chinese social media, fueled by the booming Wang Hong economy, and gained significant financial success way beyond that of established artists or celebrities. Jiang Daiyi's annual income was reported to be. Three hundred million yuan, forty-six million dollars in 2016, 
and the Wang Hong economy has been unstoppable ever since. Now, as mentioned before, while there are many similarities between the Wang Hong industry and the social media entertainment industry thriving on U.S.-based platforms, there are though significant differences worth mentioning. The most obvious one, of course, is the scope of their operations. One operates almost entirely within China, and the other has a global reach. A few Wang Hong creators have been successful in "quote unquote" breaking out, but those are exceptional cases, being in limited numbers. Although it doesn't really necessarily mean they're earning less. Wang Hong creators in China are supported by very effective monetized platforms that seamlessly mix technological advances with innovative business models that make it more lucrative for creators. These advances in technology and innovation in Chinese platforms are driven by greater competition, and at the same time, also allow greater collaboration between the platforms. In striking contrast to U.S.-based platforms, a handful of U.S.-based social media platforms have global dominance at the moment, and they are fully controlled by a few big tech companies that do not collaborate or compete that much. In China. Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent, the big three of China, compete and collaborate at the same time, investing in and taking control of other platforms such as these. With so many competing platforms running on such a robust digital transformation, Wang Hong creators exhibit a wider range of content genre. Especially with the official state's participation, which makes it rather unique. This is in part because the inclusive nature of the Wang Hong economy for mass entrepreneurship fits into the state's agenda of poverty alleviation and rural rejuvenation. Practically anyone can become a Wang Hong at a relatively low cost, and with many great benefits if they succeed. Such factors have led many of China's provincial governments and municipalities into sponsoring Wang Hong platforms and creators. The Wang Hong economy opens up opportunities for those relatively marginalized populations living in rural areas, allowing them to become Wang Hong creators. Outside China, through Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube Shorts. We often see videos of Chinese farmers using live streaming to sell their agricultural products. In China, this is usually done through Pinduoduo, the largest agriculture-focused technology platform in China. The Wang Hong economy is so important that the Chongqing Institute of Engineering has offered Wang Hong courses since 2017. And as of the mid 2020s, the Chinese government has expanded the definition of employed for fresh college graduates to cover those that open online stores, play competitive virtual games, or have blogs. So it's no surprise that Wang Hong is considered a critical part of China's high-level policy in leading in the digital economy. Although much of the Wang Hong industry has remained in China, part of the technology, though, is being exported. We are starting to see Wang Hong-like phenomena outside of China. In Southeast Asia, many countries are seeing similar rises of online platforms and brands using live streaming and internet celebrities to boost sales and promote goods. Following the model of the Wang Hong industry in China, they've integrated online shopping and live streaming onto one platform. So a better understanding of how these platforms are at play in their home countries is like a glimpse into the future of the new digital world that is coming our way. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and bye. 再见。